Okay. Um, we call Michele. Michele. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Michele, Michele is correct. <laughs> Michele. Uh -huh. Michele Himot. Are you ready? Yeah. Uh, uh, let's start. So, uh, back to of this work. It's my Professor Michele Himoti from Polytechnic of Tunin. Uh, is the Franco property for the for self shrinkers from the viewpoint of elliptic PDs. Thank you very much. And um, first of all, uh, I would like to thank the organizer for the invitation to give this online talk. And uh, I, I, it's, I'm really happy to, to to present my results here. And uh, I, I really, really hope that there will be soon the occasion to meet each other in person. So, uh, okay, in, in this talk, I would like to present some results uh, obtained in collaboration with Deborah Impera and Stefano Pigola, whose aim is to investigate the validity of the so-called Frankel property. Uh, for uh, self shrinkers uh, of the new curve of flow of hypersurfaces in the Euclidean space. Uh, that is to investigate to what extent it is true that uh, two self shrinkers have to intersect each other. And this will be done from uh, uh, taking a purely elliptic viewpoint. So forgetting about the new curve of flow and related dynamical techniques. Uh, but just focusing on the uh, very static definition of such shrinkers. Uh, so, okay, let's start. Uh, and I start giving some definitions. So, uh, letting MG be a complete uh, and dimensional Riemannian manifold uh, and considering a smooth function F on M, we can consider the weighted manifold MF. This is nothing but uh, M when equipped uh, with uh, a measure which is obtained by multiplying by e to the minus f, the Riemannian volume measure. And the geometry of uh, this object uh, is visible in the weighted metric structure of the manifold. That is the, the weighted measure of intrinsic metric object. So in particular, if uh, we have that uh, weighted measure or weighted volume of geodesic balls or their boundaries is given by uh, this expression, where here with dvm minus one and denoting the m minus one dimensional Hausdorff measure. And uh, naturally associated uh, to such an object, uh, we have uh, uh, a second order divergence form operator, which on MF takes the name of F Laplacian. This is a diffusion operator and this is defined on sufficiently regular functions uh, in this way. So uh, this clearly turns out to be a symmetric operator in the space of L2 function with respect to the weighted measure. And uh, what is important is that the analytic property of uh, this operator strongly depend on weighted metric measure properties of the weighted manifold. And these, in turn, are controlled by suitable concepts of curvature, which are adapted to the density of the measure. Uh, now, there is not a canonical choice for such a concept of curvature. And uh, indeed, many concepts were considered depending in the literature, depending uh, on the geometric problem under study. One of these choices, uh, which is was uh, very studied in recent years, uh, uh, studied a lot uh, in recent years due to its connection to uh, Ricci flow theory and uh, in particular with Ricci solitons, is the so-called Bakrian Ricci tensor of the weighted manifold uh, MF. Uh, this is defined uh, on MF as the Ricci tensor plus the Eschen of the function F. Okay, now, um, a natural and important example of weighted manifold is the so-called Gaussian space. This is nothing but the Euclidean space when uh, endowed with uh, uh, the measure obtained by multiplying by e to the minus x squared over to the Euclidean volume measure. And uh, 
Since uh, in this case, we have that the weight function is uh, x squared over two, one can easily compute that uh, we have the, that uh, the vacuum energy tensor of uh, the Gaussian space is equal to one times uh, the Euclidean matrix. And uh, as we are dealing uh, with what is called a shrinking lithosphere. And um, moreover, another important thing here is that uh, in this case, the weighted Laplacian uh, takes this form here, and hence it's nothing but uh, the well-known holstein nuremberg operator, which is uh, studied, uh, for instance, in harmonic analysis. Okay, so we are interested uh, in a uh, special class of uh, properly uh, of, uh, Im of uh, isometrically immersed hypersurfaces uh, in a weighted manifold, namely F minimal hypersurfaces, of which Sashinker of the microflow are a prominent example, as we are going to see in a minute. Uh, let, let me give this definition. So, uh, if sigma is a smooth isometrically immersed hypersurface in the weighted manifold map, so we can define the F min curvature vector field of the immersion. This is defined as the sum of the mean curvature vector field plus the normal part of, uh, uh, of nabla bar of f, where here with the bar we are denoting the, the, the differential operator in the ambient space. Okay, and uh, also I remind here that here with h, uh, I'm, not I'm not normalizing the mean curvature by it, the dimension of uh, the hypersurface. So I'm just taking the trace of the second fundamental form. And uh, okay, this, this object HF, uh, um, so we say that the sigma is F minimal if HF identically vanish. And uh, obviously if F is constant, we recover the mean curvature vector field and so the definition of uh, minimal hypersurfaces. Uh, but another important thing to notice here is that uh, this is an Euler-Lagrange equation for uh, a weighted area function, which is defined in this way. And um, so we can now simply define the shrinkers of the mean curvature flow in the Euclidean space as uh, F minimal hypersurfaces of the Gaussian space. Mm -hmm. And this is completely equivalent to require the validity of uh, this identity at uh, the fact that uh, the normal part of the immersion is equal to the opposite of the mean curvature vector field. And this is the euler lagrange equation for the Gaussian area function. It just a word about the importance of the subjects. It is uh, a general principle, which is due to Wiskin, that uh, when uh, a singularity of type one, it is the best singularity one can hope for, is developed uh, along uh, the mean curvature flow of a closed hypersurface of initial closed hypersurfaces, then uh, a blowing up procedure leads into the limit to a set shrinking solution of the new curve of the flow. And the uh, hypersurfaces satisfying such an equation, so the Sashinker equation, are precisely a, uh, a particular time slice of these Sashinker solutions. And then so the classification and the study is important, uh, of central importance in the theory of uh, new curve of the flow. Now, uh, this Important to notice that uh, so we have a shrinker uh, in uh, the Gaussian space, and uh, thus we can uh, consider another weighted manifold. Naturally, the, the weighted manifold sigma f twiddle, which is defined this way, well, f twiddle is uh, uh, f composed with x. Mm -hmm. So the the the, the, the shrinker inherits a weighted structure from the ambient space, and uh, actually we will. Uh, drop the twiddle in the notation and as it it is customary we will simply write sig sigma f in the folding okay and uh, uh, this point of view naturally lead us to compute the bacteria ricci tensor of uh, seshinka and this uh, simple computation uh, using gauss equation and uh, the seshinka equation that uh, this is bounded from below by one minus uh, the square norm of a Mm -hmm. Another important uh, link uh, between the intrinsic uh, weighted geometry and the extrinsic properties of the Sashinker comes uh, from the computation of uh, the F Laplacian of the immersion. We 
one can compute that uh, the, the, this identity also, the F Laplacian of X is equal to minus X. Uh, and uh, from this, uh, it follows directly that uh, the F Laplacian of the square norm of X is equal to two times M minus X square. Mm. So just keep in mind these two identities, which will be useful later. Okay, so before going on, uh, let me give just some examples of so, such so uh, we have that despite of uh, much numerical evidence until uh, very recently, actually, uh, there weren't so many explicit, explicit examples. Classical examples of complete properly embedded Sashinker are uh, the cylindrical products of this form. So, a product of a k dimensional uh, a spherical factor of radius uh, square root of k and the Euclidean factor of complementary dimension. This includes uh, as extreme cases when k is equal to m, uh, the n-dimensional sphere of uh, radius square root of m, and uh, all the hyperplanes to the origin when k is equal to zero. Mm -hmm. And due to a classification result by Colin Minikozzi, these are actually the only complete embedded and mean convex shrinker with extrinsic polynomial volume graph. That is, this condition Holds here on the extrinsic uh, volumes. Here I'm denoting by BR and plus one the the, the ball uh, of radius R in the ambient Euclidean space. Another classical example is uh, uh, actually a compact uh, rotation symmetric one. This is an embedded torus uh, which was constructed with the no round profile, which was constructed in a paper by Anganet. And uh, as I was saying, uh, very recently, the panorama of example really enlarged. We did, uh, uh, one can look to a paper by Dragon and Kuhn for the construction of uh, infinitely many immersed rotational symmetric shrinker with the following topological types. And uh, one can also look to uh, respectively paper by Muller and Capulea, Screen and Muller for the construction of uh, respectively uh, compact and complete non-compact uh, embedded example with i-genus inertia. These, these are constructed by means of uh, the simulation technique applied to the intersection of some of the previous examples. Okay, so uh, we are mainly interested in uh, properly immersed Sashinka and uh, it is important uh, to, to remark that uh, uh, by uh, a result by Ding and Xin, uh, later completed for some of the implications by Cheng and Zhou, uh, for any complete immersive shinker, the fact that the immersion is proper is actually equivalent uh, to the fact that sigma has uh, extrinsic polynomial value. That is the condition we, we wrote on the previous slide codes. And uh, actually, this is also equivalent to the fact that sigma has finite f vol volume. That is this condition here holds. And so, uh, by means of this result, the assumption that uh, the immersion is proper is quite natural to consider from the viewpoint of the incorporated flow, since uh, it can be proved uh, that uh, any time slice of a blow up limit uh, at the type one the singularity of a closed uh, incorporated flow uh, has this property of extrinsic polynomial volume graph. Uh, let me now give this definition. We say that the uh, weight manifold in F is F parabolic if uh, for any U with this uh, regularity here, we have that um, uh, if U is F harmonic and uh, rounded from above, it has to be necessarily constant. And it is by now well understood that parabolicity, okay, also in the non weighted setting uh, is a good uh, and natural substitute of maximum principle in the complete non copper setting. And indeed, this, this property can be characterized in many other equivalent ways. Um, but okay, for the scope of the talk, uh, let me only say that uh, this property of F parabolicity, if MF is complete, is implied by this weighted volume growth property. Namely, we, if we have that uh, uh, one over the weighted volume of a geodesic sphere is not integral at infinity, then MF is at F parabolic. And uh, 
by an application of Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, actually this uh, weight of volume growth property is implied by uh, the finiteness of the weight of volume of the manifold type. Okay, so in particular, by means of these remarks, uh, we have that given, a, uh, due to the result on the top of the slide, uh, given a properly immersed shrinker, uh, the complete weighted manifold sigma f is in particular f parabolic. Okay, so our uh, aim is to investigate uh, uh, the validity of the so-called Frankel property for such shrinkers. And this terminology comes after a paper by Frankel, who proved that any two closed minimal immersed hypersurfaces in the sphere, or more generally in a Riemannian manifold with strictly positive Ricci curvature, must intersect. And the original proof by Frankel worked uh, by contradiction, assuming that the two hypersurfaces are at a positive distance, and then uh, applying uh, uh, the second variation of formula for uh, the arc length functional uh, along a minimal geodesic realizing the distance. And um, okay, it is important to, to remark now that uh, one can see, as uh, we, we saw in the, in the previous talk, uh, that uh, in, 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 uh, in another setting, that in many instances, uh, uh, properly immersed shrinker behave like uh, closed minimal hypersurfaces of the sphere. And this uh, is uh, visible, for instance, when one looks uh, to stability properties of these objects. There is really an analogy among uh, results uh, holding one setting and the results holding the other setting. And okay, this philosophy, say, naturally led us to consider the following problem. So uh, if we have two complete properly immersed shrinker, to what extent is it true that they have to intersect? And um, a prototype result uh, in this direction is due to Bay Vaili, who dealt with the compact case. Actually, what is really needed in, uh, in the result is that the positive distance between the hypersurfaces is realized at finite points. Namely, they prove that uh, if uh, the positive distance is realized at finite points, then uh, uh, to properly immerse a shrinker f to intersect. And uh, that technique uh, inspired to uh, another paper by Peterson Willem um, and uh, worked again by contradiction and then uses f Laplacian comparison uh, for the distance function uh, for the hypersurface distance function and the maximum distance. Okay. And after this result by Dave Wiley, few other partial positive answer were provided in literature, but these are most related to generalized uh, space properties of the shrinkers. We are going to detail about this point uh, in a minute. Uh, okay, so at the, the end of the rest of the talk uh, is uh, the following. So we will deal with uh, the immersed case, meaning non necessarily embedded case, and we will study some uh, space type results for uh, such shrinker. We will first recall the weak uh, space theorem for complete such shrinker we obtained in collaboration with Stefano Piccola. And uh, as oh, we are going to see, this, the proof of this result uh, is uh, analytic, uh, uh, very direct, and actually is uh, based on the potential theory of weighted manifolds. Uh, actually, the, the first part of the result is really a straight application of the concept of f parabolism. Uh, but okay, this is that method uh, actually uh, permits also, also to study uh, in another case. So how a properly immersed shrinker uh, place themselves in the ambient space with respect to a such shrinker cylinder. Namely, we will show that a properly immersed shrinker cannot be located neither inside nor outside, thus recovering the main result in this paper by Cavalcante Spinal, who instead used a more geometric approach. Um, while in the second part, we will study the general problem uh, in the embedded setting, and uh, we will work again by contradiction 
Uh, so assuming that uh, two proton embedded Schinkel do not intersect, and then we will apply a localized version of the Riley formula to a suitable F harmonic function, which will be shown to exist in the hypothetical region in between the two shrinks. Uh, this function will, will have control gradient, and this, uh, in order to show that two properly embedded Schinke that are sufficiently separated at infinity, meaning that they don't move close to rapidly at infinity, must intersect at the final point. Ica is uh, inspires to a recent paper by Fraser Lee, uh, who proved the validity of the Franker property in the setting of uh, uh, free bound, compact free boundary, compact embedded free boundary minimal hypersurfaces uh, in, the, in, in spaces with the non-negative energy curvature. Okay. But here we are in the complete non combat setting. So let us start with part one. Um, we, after the celebrated paper by Hoffman Mix, uh, we recall that uh, we say that the weak space property holds for a certain family F of immersed hypersurfaces if any sigma in this family cannot be confined in certain spaces unless it is a totally geodesic type. Okay? And uh, so in uh, our setting, uh, it is a consequence of the result by Wayne Riley that uh, in particular, every compact uh, shrinker must intersect every hyperplane pi through the origin. Okay, this is, this is uh, a, a shrink and every hyperplane through the origin. And in the terminology of uh, a weaker space uh, result, uh, we could say that uh, uh, a, con a compact Schinker cannot be confined in an half space determined by an, an hyperplane to the origin. And uh, okay, we present here uh, an analytic proof of this result, uh, which is somewhat more direct than the, by, by the original argument, uh, which, as we are going to see, is suitable for uh, generalization to a more general setting. We recall uh, that uh, for a Sashinker, we have the validity of this differential identity. So the F Laplacian of X is equal to minus X. Uh, and therefore, if we write the normal equation of uh, the hyperplane pi in this way, we have that an analogous equation holds also for L of X. So now just a simple application of the maximum principle for the F Laplacian yields the desired conclusion, namely that X of sigma cannot be contained in one of the closed R spaces determined by pi. So the following result uh, will list some assumption with, uh, whose validity implies the, flus, the full conclusion of the compact case in the complete non compact setting. So we let uh, sigma be a complete non compact shrinker and assume that one of the following assumptions uh, is fulfilled. Namely, as extrinsic polynomial volume, or we have that the weighted volume of judicial balls in this way, or we have this LP, weighted LP uh, control on the square norm of A, jointly with this L infinity bound. Okay, then for every hyperplane pi through the origin again, if x of sigma lies on one side of pi, then it has to coincide with pi. Uh, okay, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to into details about point C, just, just let me mention that uh, this point C here uh, also uh, comprehend, uh, uh, also, also include uh, situations where, uh, where the dimension is not proper, okay? But uh, what about A and B? If either A or B holds, then we have that sigma f is a parabolic for the criterion we saw before. And that's uh, exactly the same proof of the compact case applies. Okay, so we have exactly the same proof uh, of the compact case we, we have seen in the previous, uh, in the previous slide. Okay, so uh, the same technique uh, permits to study how 
uh, set properly message linker behave uh, with respect to the slash linker cylinder. And we have that uh, uh, if uh, uh, we have this result uh, that uh, if we consider a properly message linker and uh, XR sigma is confined inside either one of the connected regions, which is determined by the slash linker, then uh, uh, it tends to coincide with the cylinder. And as I was saying, this recovers a result by Cavalcante Spinar, who instead uh, used a stability argument and uh, a suitable adaptation to the weighted setting of uh, the so-called touching principle. Okay, so let, let us see a sketch of our proof. So we, we fix the, the dimension of the spherical factor of the cylinder, okay? And uh, we consider a, a corresponding orthonormal phase, so the frame uh, which is adapted to the cylinder. Yeah? And we denote by XA uh, the coordinate function of the immersion. Uh, then if we consider this function U on, on the search ring, uh, namely the sum uh, as A goes to from one to K plus one of XA squared, this is uh, the square norm of the projection of the immersion on the k plus one plane, which is orthogonal to the Euclidean factor of the cylinder. Then one has that uh, the, the, this differential inequality holds. Okay. Now, uh, assume to be in the interior case, so we are inside the cylinder. Uh, this means that u is bounded from above by k. Okay, but uh, if this inequality holds, uh, then we have that u is a, a function which is bounded from above and f sub, uh, sub, subharmonic. Okay, as by f parabolicity, we get that u has to be constant. And uh, okay, sub substituting this information uh, in, the, in the differential uh, inequality here, we get that actually u has to be constantly equal to k. But now by completeness, we, we get that x of sigma has to coincide with the cylinder yielding the desired contradiction. Mm -hmm. And the exterior case uh, uh, works uh, analogously. So can be proved that uh, the f Laplacian of the square, root, the square root of u is uh, bounded from above by this term here. Okay, but uh, if we are in the exterior region, then u is bounded from below by k. And if now we consider this function, the square root of k minus the square root of u, this is uh, uh, non-negative, so in particular bounded from below, and by this inequality, it is at super amount. And that's an application of f parabolicity yields reasoning as above uh, the desired contradiction. Okay, so okay, this is more direct proof uh, of this result. Okay, so uh, if, are there any questions? Otherwise, I go on with part two. Okay, so we want now to, to deal with the, the general case in the bandwidth setting. And uh, roughly speaking, what we are going to prove is that uh, two properly embedded sessions are, that are separated enough at infinity. That is, they don't move close to rapidly at infinity must intersect at some final point. Hmm? And okay, our first main result uh, is the following, uh, which uh, we call theorem B. Uh, consider two properly embedded connected sets, sigma one and sigma two. So uh, then they have to intersect uh, given the following two conditions are uh, fulfilled. The first one is uh, an extrinsic uh, regularity assumption on one of the two hypersurfaces. We are uh, saying sigma two. We, we are asking the sigma two as a uniform regular normal neighborhood. And uh, the second condition is uh, instead uh, an asymptote, which we call AC, is, a, is an asymptotic distance condition uh, for the two session. We ask uh, that uh, they don't come close at infinity uh, faster than uh, this uh, exponential rate here at the denominator. Okay. So, okay, uh, just a comment about 
the first assumption, the extrinsic regularity assumption, as in the two, as it can be seen uh, uh, from the proof, this assumption can be considerably relaxed. Uh, what is really needed is that the ray of this regular normal neighborhood at the point decays uh, in uh, some suitable way, okay, which is related uh, to the, the, this other asymptotic condition. Okay, but just think to this, uh, this okay, simple case, yeah. Uh, actually, if we drop uh, the restriction of the extensive geometry of sigma 2, the same method uh, gives the following weaker conclusion. Um, so, consider two properly embedded uh, Sashinker, or more generally uh, for this result, F minimal hypersurfaces inside the complete weighted manifold MF with uh, strictly positive Bakriemer Richard curvature. And in this more general case, we have also to assume that each of sigma 1 and sigma 2 separates MF then we have that sigma 1 cannot be a positive distance apart from sigma 2. Okay, uh, this, this results uh, actually extend the result in the setting of embedded that is uh, extend the result by very wide, since it covers also the case where the two hypersurfaces have positive distance, but they realize their positive distance at infinity. Okay, this, this case was not covered by very value result. Okay, so actually both these results, uh, theorem B and theorem C, uh, are consequences uh, of uh, the following abstract result. Um, so we have that given two uh, properly embedded uh, F minimal surfaces in a weighted manifold with strictly positive bacteria curvature, uh, if we assume that they do not intersect uh, and that uh, each of uh, sigma 1 and sigma 2 separates math. Let, let us call the domain enclosed by the two hypersurfaces by omega. Then we have that uh, if u is a smooth solution of the following Richler problem, namely an f harmonic function in omega which holds zero on one side and one on the other side, another of u is not square integrable with respect to the weighted measure. And let, let me give an idea of how this result can be proven. Uh, the main tool here is uh, a localized version of uh, Riley's formula, which holds in the complete non-compact, uh, in this case, weighted setting. Uh, okay, this is this is stated in this lemma. Uh, okay, I, I don't read it, but uh, okay, let us just apply this formula to our solution of the Dirichlet problem. So one notice that uh, uh, due to the boundary condition of boundary conditions of U and also the F minimality of sigma one and sigma two, here the uh, right hand side uh, vanishes. So this, this disappears and we are uh, left only with the, with the right hand side. Mm -hmm. So an application now of Young's and Carter's inequality, yes, that for any positive epsilon, we have the validity of this integral inequality. Mm -hmm. Now we can choose epsilon greater than one and forget about this first term. Okay, and uh, okay, now uh, we, we just choose the, uh, in a suitable way the cutoff function in order to deduce the validity of this inequality here. And uh, okay, now we can take the limit as r going to infinity and obtain that uh, the F2 uh, uh, to norm of number u, weighted norm of number u is bounded from above by this limit here. But u is non-constant since it uh, holds zero on one side and one on the other. So uh, this is strictly positive and hence the limit is strictly positive. And this uh, obviously uh, leads to the desired conclusion. So the, the, the fact that uh, nabla u is not square integrable uh, in the way uh, with respect to the way to match. Hmm. Okay, so this was the proof of the abstract result. Now, let me see how we can apply 
this abstract result in order to prove our theorem B. So what is the strategy here? We, we work by contradiction as uh, all the previous uh, proofs uh, we have seen about uh, Frankel property. So we assume that sigma one and sigma two are disjoint. Then we know we are in the, in the Gaussian space. So by, we know by Jordan Brower separation theorem that each sigma j separates an n plus one and therefore it is well defined the region omega in between. So we can think schematically to be in this situation here. And now we want to construct on omega a bounded positive f harmonic function u with Dirichlet boundary condition zero and one respectively on sigma one and sigma two. And um, in order to do this, we solve mixed boundary value problems along an a good exhaustion of omega. Namely, we consider omega k a good exhaustion, meaning that uh, the boundary uh, for these domains intersect transversely uh, both sigma one and sigma two. And, uh, and so we consider on this omega k this mixed boundary value problem. And well, we are imposing on the uh, free part of the boundary uh, the normal condition. And this can be solved. Uh, this is uh, uh, an application of the standard Perron's method uh, due to Lieberman. And in particular, we can produce uh, solutions to these mixed boundary value problems, which are continuous uh, up to the boundary and actually smooth uh, outside the singular uh, sets of the boundary. Now we can consider for every fixed omega key knot of uh, this exception, we consider UK for K sufficiently large and uh, an application of interior and boundary shoulder estimates enables us to give a uniform on the C2 alpha norm of this, this function, these solutions. So we can actually uh, obtain convergence uh, of these solutions uh, in C2 on, uh, on, on this compact set omega key knot. And now we, we just uh, up to some sequence of this. And uh, now we just uh, let uh, k naught go into infinity and the diagonal argument uh, yields uh, the convergence uh, uh, to the desired global solution. Mm -hmm. So, okay, in this way we construct uh, this solution, this smooth solution to, uh, to the Dirichlet problem. And uh, now we can use uh, the asymptotic distance assumption, AC, and the condition on the stacy geometry of sigma two to obtain that in fact, uh, this U has uh, a finite Dirichlet and weighted Dirichlet energy. Okay, and this yet yeah, the contradiction due to our yeah, abstract result we just see. Okay, so uh, before going into some details about uh, the point three here, yeah, let me just give a comment about the uniqueness of the solution we have just constructed. We said that uh, given a math a weighted manifold with boundary, we say that uh, it is f parabolic in the sense of Dirichlet if every bounded f harmonic function <coughs> uh, sufficiently regular is uniquely determined by its boundary values. And uh, adapting to the framework of weighted manifolds, what is known from a recent paper by Impera, Pigola, and Setti, we have that this condition uh, is by the fact that the weighted volume of geodesic poles grows quadratically. And um, then, uh, so uh, equitability in the sense of Dirichlet can, is implied by this volume growth problem. Uh, since in our setting we had uh, the weighted volume of our domain, omega, is bounded from above by the weighted volume of m, but this is finite since, okay, we have uh, 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 a strictly positive Bakrian energy curvature and this, it, 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 is, it, can, it can be proved that manifold with strictly positive Bakrian energy curvature have a finite f volume. Then, uh, 
the complete name for Mika bar with boundary is f parabolic in the sense of division. Hence, in particular, a boundary solution of the division problem, if any, must be unique. So our solution, a unique solution of that problem. Okay, so let me yeah, now comment about uh, the, the finiteness of the weighted Dirichlet energy of you. Uh, the first step uh, is the following Kachopol inequality up to the boundary, which reduces the problem, so the estimate of this object, to an estimate of uh, the norm of nabla u along sigma 2. Okay, so sigma 2 is the, the, the part of the boundary where we are imposing uh, the datum 1. Okay, so we are reduced to study an estimate for this object along sigma 2, and this can actually be carried out by the following second lemma. So if u is a solution of our problem, and we assume that sigma 2 satisfies an exterior R-sphere condition at some point, z is sigma 2, then we have that uh, the norm of number u is bounded from above by this term here. Where here, it makes its appearance uh, uh, at the, the denominator here, the term which justify our asymptotic distance condition in the, in the statement of theorem B. Mm -hmm. And, uh, okay, let us comment about this exterior R-sphere condition. Uh, we, we recall that uh, uh, the exterior sphere condition at uh, a point Z uh, of the boundary uh, is said to hold if there exists uh, a ball in the ambient space which is contained in the, the complement of omega bar such that uh, this ball is tangent to sigma Z. It can be easily proved that this condition here is implied by the assumption that the existence uh, by the existence of a regular normal neighborhood of sigma whose y width uh, at uh, z, uh, z is at least r. Mm -hmm. uh, and this condition is really essential in our argument since, uh, okay, the, the method for the proof of this uh, second lemma is a local barrier method. And uh, actually this condition uh, permits to construct upper and lower barrier z for the operator delta f and the function b equal to u minus one. So okay, this is really essential in our argument. Um, okay, so uh, putting together these two lemmas, so lemma one and lemma two, we can uh, prove the uh, finiteness of the f and f energy of u. Uh, so we have that by lemma one, uh, we are reduced to estimate this term here, but uh, in view of the asymptotic distance condition AC and lemma two, we know that uh, uh, the norm of number u is bounded from above by this exponential. And now we recall that uh, since sigma 2 is properly immersed, then we have uh, extrinsic uh, polynomial volume growth. Uh, and so, in particular, we get that the norm of number u is in L1 of sigma 2 with respect to the wave measure. And therefore, also, uh, we, we get the finiteness of the F energy of u. Okay, so, uh, okay, I have still some, some minutes. Uh, uh, I would like to conclude the, the talk now, uh, giving some uh, variational argument, uh, which actually permits to obtain uh, uh, the same conclusion in the situation in which we have that uh, the two such shrinker have a positive distance. Okay, without any extrinsic regularity assumption on sigma 2. Uh, we note that in this situation, it can be proved that the solutions UK we have constructed to the mixed boundary value problem over the extension using Lieberman approach actually coincide with those obtained by applying the direct calculus of variation to the weighted, this weighted area function, weighted energy function on the closed convex space of W12 function on omega k, which all zero on sigma one and one on sigma two. And thus, uh, in particular, each UK is 
a minimizer of EKF over this closed convex space. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we are in the situation in which the two, uh, say F minimal in uh, a weighted manifold with uh, uh, strictly positive bacteria H curvature have uh, a positive distance, then uh, uh, we can define this function psi. This function psi, okay, yeah, at the numerator, there is the term, okay, this makes sense obviously if only if this situation holds. And this, this function psi can be used actually as a global barrier function. Okay, so in this particular case, we can construct a global barrier. And uh, now we can uh, deduce uh, that actually without any assumption on the extensive geometry of the uh, surfaces, the boundary solution U has finite F energy. Why? Since uh, we can consider the restriction to omega K of this psi, of the barrier function psi, and uh, we recall that uh, we have proven that uh, up to subsequences, UKC2 converges on compact subset of omega to the bounding solution U. And since this psi K uh, is in our closed convex space, we deduce that uh, it's, uh, it cannot, the, the energy function, yeah, okay. Uh, on K naught of UK is bounded from above by the, uh, the, the Dirichlet energy of the global barrier, which is finite. So in particular, since, okay, uh, NABLA UK converts uniformly on compass subset of omega bar, we can now apply Fatou's lemma to conclude that uh, NABLA U is inert to of omega uh, with respect to the weighted measure, and again get the contradiction by our abstract result. Okay, so we let me conclude just saying, okay, we have given, we have uh, presented a, an elliptic uh, way to deal with uh, this Frankel property for shrinkers. Uh, it is worth to mention that uh, there is an idea by Ilmanen. Uh, parabolic idea by Iman, uh, to prove uh, the Frankel property for properly embedded uh, cell shrinker uh, using uh, uh, a localized version of the avoidance uh, property uh, of the mean curve flow. Uh, okay, nevertheless, uh, this the technique uh, I presented in my opinion is interesting since uh, it is uh, somewhat uh, uh, it, 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 it can be applied also to situations where uh, we, we are not coming uh, out from uh, a geometric flow. Okay, so, so uh, for instance, to the case of uh, f minimal surfaces uh, in, uh, immersed in a weighted manifold with a strictly positive bacteria uh, coverage, but hopefully also to other settings. Okay, so I think I'm done. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Comments? Uh, oh, Michelle, I, I have a question. Actually, I don't know the answer. Uh, I want to know if the boundaries of the second molecular form, uh, the properties of self shrink. Uh, the boundaries of the second molecular form. Uh, if, if the properties. Um, uh, yes, uh, if if it is uh, really bound, it says if if the, the the second fundamental form is strictly less than one, okay, yes, but by by your result, it has finite F volume, and so it is properly immersed. Uh, only bounded, less than two. But yeah. only bounded. Uh, I, I I don't know that. Uh, yeah. 
if you know, please let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, sure. Questions? So if not, let's speak again for the interesting talk. Yeah.